Hi, I'm Stephanie. I'm a 49 year old makeup artist in the San Antonio area and I'm here to tell you the science behind pretty. I've noticed no one else is doing this. There's some amazing makeup artists on TikTok and I don't know if I'm better than any of them, but I know the science behind light absorption, light reflection, and I can't wait to share it with you. So stick around. This first part is going to be about foundation, how to choose the shade, and we'll start with uh, what color on your face would you like to match? Yeah, it's a tough one, right? Here's a little secret. I've used the same foundation color on 90% of my clients. Want to know why? We all have a lot of color going on on our face. There's probably 10 different shades going on. We have dark spots. We have light spots. So which color is it that you're supposed to match? Or are you supposed to use the underside of your wrist? Or are you supposed to use the underside of your neck that hasn't seen the light of day in 25 years? I don't know. But here's what I do know. That the healthiest color is the best choice for you. The healthiest color you can choose is one that looks like the tan going on on the top of your arms, on your shoulders, on your chest, and that's almost always a neutral that leans a little bit toward yellow. This nice neutral shade from Because, their perfect foundation, could go a little bit darker and I could still get away with it. It could be a little bit lighter and I could still get away with it. There's actually probably three or four different shades that would work beautifully for you because you're gonna highlight, you're gonna contour, and by the end, you're gonna end up bringing all of the colors back that represent your face, but you're just going to put them in exactly the right place to maximize your ratios. That's one layer. Let's see what happens with two. Siren brush, a little bead of color, spread it out. Now the second layer has to go on with more finesse than the first. The first one is being pushed into the skin. This one is sitting on top of makeup. Makeup on top of makeup needs to be done with finesse. Some of you are so heavy handed that you're literally just moving the product around on your face instead of creating the layers that make you look like a filtered goddess. Next up, concealer. Which one do I use? How bright do I go? What consistency should it be? Where should I put it? What shape is my face? Oh my God, stop whining and go to part two. Before we get into concealer, I have to talk about the philosophy behind makeup that I do, and that is to get focus onto your eyeballs, not onto your eyelids. No one has ever come to me and said, you know, I would really like for my eyelids to stand out for my wedding day. It's never happened. No one has ever said, I'd really like my nose to stand out or even my cheekbones. It's never been asked. They always say, I want my eyes. And then I ask, what part of your eyes? and then they're stomped. Of course, your eyeballs is where you want people to see into your soul so that you can be heard and understood. And in order to get people to find your eyes a restful place and a place that they can dive deeper into, there has to be very little distraction elsewhere. So everything that we're gonna do is going to point people to your eyeballs and keep them there. So starting with concealer, we're gonna brighten under the eyes by just dotting a little bit, starting kind of at that corner where the tear duct is. I'm going to do a little bit down the nose here and here. Brightness brings things forward. Okay. So if your eyes are hollow underneath, this is going to bring them forward. Then we're going to take our siren brush, same one. Don't even have to clean it. doesn't absorb anything. And we're going to pull it down the side wall of the nose gently because we're doing makeup on top of makeup. And then we're going to sweep it over very gently and barely touching my face. We don't want to scrub or we're going to wipe it all off. All right, now we're nice and highlighted. While we're making the trip over to the other side, we'll just go down the nose. And then here again, down the side wall of the nose. That is going to make the nose appear, the side wall of the nose appear as if it is a in the same family with the under eye area instead of something altogether separate. There we go. A little highlight on this part of the forehead brings it forward, making the rest of the forehead recede. Same with the chin. If you have a forward chin, you'd want to skip this. This is the Because Concealer in Cafe Ale. And no, every product I'm using is not from Because. I do have an account with them and I do get commission off of their products because I have found so many products that are basically exactly the same as the ones that are super expensive and that everybody's using and this brand just has never done me wrong. 
I set one side underneath um, with the perfect powder something what is this perfect pressed powder in pink it just has a barely pink tone to it it gets rid of fine lines it literally gets rid of fine lines it's so finely milled it's gorgeous and this is going to keep the concealer from creasing underneath your eyes just dab it on there ever so gently coming up next that tricky tricky contour Okay, before we talk about contour, it's important to understand why you haven't been able to change any of your makeup habits no matter how many TikToks you watch. And here's the thing, it's probably because you're not sitting down and it's probably because you're not giving yourself a date with yourself to do makeup when it doesn't matter. So you need to light a candle, pour a glass of wine, put on some good music, sit down at eight o'clock at night and in front of a mirror that you can pull close to your face in a seated position, and change your habits. Muscle memory is a very, very strong motivator and you don't even know it. So you fall back into your old habits the minute your mind gets distracted. So find a place to sit down, even if you have to take all of your makeup and a lighted stand mirror to your dining room table to do it. This is deep chocolate concealer, meant to be a contour. I'm gonna wipe off the entire brush. I wish that it had a tighter, pull out um, whatever that thing is called, but it doesn't. So we're gonna make it work like this and we're going to put it here higher than you think, right on top of the cheekbone, okay? So the highest point of your face is the, or the apex of the cheekbone, the highest point. And then we're going to smear it around. Actually, let's give the, we're gonna use the leftovers on the nose. That's safer to start with. All right, same brush. We're gonna dab it out a little bit, make sure it wasn't too much. If it was too much, you just go to a towel and pull it off the brush. Then we're gonna take it up to the temples and we're basically gonna make a C this way and a C this way, but we're gonna start with the cheeks first. Wherever you put makeup down first, that is where it is going to be its most intense. So don't screw that up, okay? You can blend it into all the other areas, but you don't want to mess up the initial placement because that's where it will be the strongest. Now, why use a concealer and not a bronzer? That is because we are over 40 and we want glow. We don't want powder. Powder buildup is just less pretty, but I will use a powder when I'm in a hurry and you can too. So you should have both. So here we are looking tanned and lovely and the contour basically makes things recede. Okay, so highlight brings it forward, contour recedes. So now we've shaped our face in a way that puts the golden triangle, which is your brows to your mouth, this little triangle of interest right here, getting rid of everything else and bringing this forward with a little bit of pushing back of the nose. And now we are ready for blush. Rare Beauty Nearly Mauve Cream Blush. Give a cheesy grin, find the apple of your cheek and swipe outward, but land right on the apple and then start using a dry finger to smudge it out. 